Let's talk about the holy book of Muslims and let's ask questions about Quran. One of the reason, one of the reason I meet with Muslims and they tell me they are Muslim because Quran contains scientific miracles. That is amazing. It's not only amazing. Without shameless, they publish lots of books about this. All those books are given to you by Muslims, which makes a claim that Quran is the word of Allah because it makes scientific claims. So what we've done is just go to a couple of them and then see how damaging it is for Quran to understand the science. So we will be looking at only a couple of topics to see actually what does Quran teaches and what does the science teach. Those are the books. Look at them well, memorize them. Never, never spend your money for those things. They are just for, to keep yourself hot. If you are cold, you can even burn them. So they are very bad, bad books. But book? we are going to look at them. So I look at the Quran and then I see the claims Allah makes about Quran. Allah says Quran is well detailed, well explained. So when Muslims produce these books, I believe they look at the Quran and then they looked at the well detailed verses to explain me if it contains scientific miracles or not. One of the things I hear from them is Quran is the word of Allah because Quran got the embryology correct. Reason for that is Muhammad lived in 7th century, 570 to 632 didn't have any access to any medical hospital or any technology. Informations in the Quran must be word of Allah because Muhammad got the scientific informations correct. In his time, Muhammad didn't know how the baby develops in the mother's uh, tummy. Okay, so that's my first claim. What would you say to that? First of all, what is your general general view on Quran as a scientific miracle? Well, uh, Hatin, we, we read the Quran and we see the Muslim claims that the Quran contains these miraculous scientific insights. Things which, which could possibly have been uh, known by a 7th century Arab. And one of the, uh, there's a statistical fallacy which is committed by every one of the Muslim claims. And this is known as the Texas Structure Fallacy. So, what, what, what is this? Now, does anyone know what the Texas Structure Fallacy is? Basically, I think that he knows. Do you know what is this? Texas. No. Is this about this? Sorry? Okay, I got your email. Yeah, we will come to that. Just can you wait a little bit? Just give us a little bit of time. Okay. So um, the Texas sharpshooter fallacy is imagine you are a sharpshooter and you fire at a wall and then you get it some paint and you paint the bullseye around the entry point. <laughs> That is the Texas Sharpshooter fallacy. And it happens when you cherry pick the parts of the Quran which are consistent with modern science and ignore everything else it says about the same topic which contradicts modern science. So are you trying to tell me Muslims are cherry picking their scripture? Exactly. What do you expect from Muslims? They are machines, they don't know what they call even she Is it correct? Is it correct that Quran makes a claim? So you are Muslim, help me out. Is it correct that Quran makes a claim that Quran knows how the embryology takes place? Embryology, even Greek philosophers, they got it wrong embryology. One of them, Socrates, or he says, the human being as a miniature is in this bed. That's what they talk about. When Muhammad arrived, Quran talked about embryology in a modern sense. And that's why all all embryologists they agree the Quran. Same all of them, yeah. All, all okay. of the the Quran, yeah. All <laughs> Let's see what those embryologists say. I'm not talking. So, one of the, one of the reasons Muslims interpreted. Yeah, that's what the Quran says. No, no, about that's what the The Quran talk about, yes, in Barrio, first of all, this is this one of the stages. This is the embryo, but the Quran, 
the, the people they know this thing, not the Dutch. Because no one, no microscope. So Islam talk to the people what they know. Yes. Quran compare talk about this league. So they, no one has ever seen this before. So what now? Now, now we see this what Quran means. Okay, so Muslims are agreeing with me saying it was impossible in the time of Muhammad. Muhammad would guess embryo would look like a leech. So he is that you can get this from the Muslim books. That's the shape and graph they give it to you. Just a moment. That is it, it is from the it is from the Muslim. Just wait. Just wait. Who was a Muslim at that time? But that's the first claim. Second claim is this one. Embryo is suspended thing. Okay, this is talking about the birth a la carte. And then third one is the amazing embryo look like chewing gum. No problem. No problem. That's good. Yeah. No problem. Here I've got chewing gum. Yeah, they look the similar. Muhammad wouldn't be able to know this in his time. That is just amazing miracle. What did you say before? That's Today, just amazing miracle. So, if Christian says so, so let's look at from but the now, scientific you are perspective. A Even they look. When you are intelligent, you can highlight like this. These people, they are a machine. You remember what I said? They go to church, drink wine, they dance all day. All day, they, she copy what is there. She can't come out. She have, cannot have you been to church? You are wearing the machine. She can't uh, Let's put this in your pocket, sorry. Look can you put that in your pocket? Can you put that in your pocket? Now, why are you drink wine up there? Look at this. Why? Have you been to church? Come on. Come on, be fair. Have you been to church? Have you seen them drinking wine? Okay. Which has been published by Muslims for the Dawa purpose. That is what Muslims come up. I didn't come up with this because I've got brain and I exercise that brain. But it is Muslims who come up with this analogy. So let's look at from the scientific perspective, perspective and then tell us what does Quran teach us about embryology. Do we have the next part of the verse? We never so we are looking at verse Surah 23, verse 12 to 14. So Muslims would use chapter 23, verse 12 to 14 to make a point. Mountain is okay. We're not on that topic yet. Just wait. Oh, get mountains. Islam says mountain has a root. First, let's deal what Islam says about embryology, and we will come to the mountain. You can see mountains, they have big uh, uh, 12 to 14. <laughs> Chapter 23, verse 12 to 14. Okay, so this is the text. Certainly did we create man from an extract of clay, then we placed him as a sperm drop in a firm lodging, i.e. the whim. Then we made the sperm drop into a clinging clot, and we made the clot into a lump. Uh, this translation is a flesh. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and then it says, um, you can't need the which, which is actually a more accurate translation of mutka, but yeah. Uh, but then it says, and we made uh, the lump bones, uh, and we covered the bones with flesh. This is the part that we didn't put earlier. So, what is the problem with this verse? So, it says that the bones are formed first, and then they are clothed with flesh. Then we developed them into another creation. So, blessed is Allah, the best of the creators. So, is this, is this an accurate reflection of our embryology? Of course not. This is... You are not can you come, sir? Can you come a little bit closer so we can hear you? Can you come a little bit closer? We can hear you. The issue is, Professor Dr. Keith Moore, the yeah. most qualified embryologist in the world, says he's not a Muslim, no vested interest. He said Muhammad was not like 1400 years ago. You're doing a doctor, right? Who do I go with? Who is doing a doctor or the brother who's a professor who's been studying that for decades and decades and decades? Do you see where I'm coming from? Does he say that the bones are formed first and then they're clothed by flesh? I don't know the general. The thing is, he never said anything. He never said. But that's completely wrong. He never said. He never said, he never said anything. These people that are very lucky. That was wrong. That's the thing. So you come in and say it's wrong. He's saying it's right. I don't care what Keith Moore says.
I care about what the evidence says. Huh? I don't care about Keith Purcell. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Um, as a person who doesn't have access to the evidence, right? I have to look at people who do have access to the evidence. Yeah. Yeah. He does have access to the evidence. Yeah, he's wrong. So do you. So, so, Jasima, does the kid more, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Does that professor confirms and tells you, can you read the, let me read the verse for you, Philip? I'll, I'll read it from this translation. We created man from an extract of clay. Then we made him as a drop in a place of statement, settlement, firmly fixed. Then we made the drop into alaka. Then we made the alaka into mughla. Okay, that's the uh, tree substance. And we made the muk, uh, mukha, sorry for my pronunciation, bones, and then we covered the bones with flesh. And then we developed him into another creation, creation Surah 23. So, blessed is Allah and uh, the best of the creatures. Creation, creatures. So, where is it? Where is it? You can find me source that professor confirm. Confirm. First, you've got the bones. After that, you've got the flesh. Where is that source? Okay. Have you seen the video? I'm not talking about the half of the verse. I'm talking about does he confirm the full of the verse and then says yes. This is a scientific miracle. Answer is no. Okay. The thing is, the bottom line is, right? He's not Muslim. I don't care if he's Muslim or not. That's not the point. I am asking. I am asking a very simple question. No, 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 no. No bias towards it. But you are not answering my question. Did he read the full verse and then confirm it? Answer is no. Because I don't know. I know. I know. Answer is no. Answer is no. You don't know the answer, but you will go home and check it out. What I do know is that he said things in the Quran no way Muhammad could have known in 1400 years ago. Okay. God bless him. That's him. And he's not Muslim. No vested, no vested interest. No bias towards it. Yeah. Let me, let me confirm that. There are the things in the Quran. Muhammad, in his time, it was a miracle for Muhammad to know. Such as previous people of the book, Christians and Jews, were given the scripture. That is miracle Muhammad knows. But this part of the Quran, Surah 23, verse 12 to 14, is destroy the science. Muhammad did not know that. Allah did not know that. Your professor does not no, confirm. He's not, my That's the he's not my professor. He's an American non-Muslim professor. That not American non-Muslim professor, Moore, com does not confirm. Does not confirm. I, I'm saying, telling you. I'm, I'm telling you. I can't confirm. He does I not confirm that first. You've got the uh, bombs, then you've got the flesh. He does not confirm that. So, when we look at the embryology, we see it destroys the history and science. So, no matter what he says, it's still wrong, no matter how many credentials he has. But, okay, but the thing is... But he didn't say that, that's the problem. I agree, I can't just take your word. Well, just for the sake of it, right? Good, I don't have evidence. What I do have is you document him, professor. Okay. Mark, you shouldn't, you shouldn't take my word, you should take his word. You should okay. go look at the evidence for yourself. So we present the evidence, you go and check it out, check that we're telling you the truth, and then make your own judgment. Because you can always find people in both states. But look, but do you agree he's not seen it okay. in you? He's not so seen I it in you. Can, I can Are you agreeing? He's not seen it in you. And, he's he's not, and because sir? the thing is, you're, what you're saying confirms your best interest not to believe in I, I this. I can list you embryology professors who have written refuting your argument. So an atheist embryologist, for example, P.Z. Myers, has written extensively um, critiquing the Quranic embryology. So, let me ask you... Can say professors. So, let me ask you a very simple question. How, how old are you? 19. 19? Yeah. You are so young. So, <laughs> so, you are only 20 years old. I guess you have been to 7th seven, uh, grade, 8th grade. So uh, you've been. I've been in school since three. Since so three years, you, you've three been, you've been to you've been to school since three years old. So you've been in the school for sixteen years. Yeah. Can you please confirm for me when the baby develops in the mother's tummy? Yeah. First, you've got the bones. After that, 
You've got the flash. Is that what you are confirming? You know the word, thumma, it can mean then, it can also mean more over. So it can also mean a si sim something simultaneous, yeah. right? The problem so, is... So, 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 okay, no, no, that's let's, true, that's true. Yeah, yeah, so far, let's put yeah. that in practice. We have, a, we have a reputation for that. Yes, yeah. let's put that in practice for the whole verse. Can you read the whole verse for us? Yeah. With saying... Are you listening, sir? Frank, yeah, yeah, we are just responding. Okay. Okay, let's respond, he will okay. stop. Can you just so change the, the meaning says. and then read it for us? So, we created man from next stretch of clay, then we made him as a drop in a place of settlement firmly fixed, then we made the drop into an alaka, and then we made the alaka into a muck gun. Now, the, the same conjunction just spa is used each time. So if you're going to interpret it in that way, in this instance, you also have to translate the word fa in that see, way see, all of the time. Language is not a scientific thing. Language is fluid, right? A word can mean something, something, the same word can mean something, something in one instance, and another thing, just like a few moments instance. In a different language, context. Language is not a scientific thing. Right. right. It, it, Reading in context, something fluid. But you're context. undermining your own argument no. for the Quran's no. embryological miracle. No, 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 no get it. A, a, a word, right. some, a word, same word, can mean something slightly different or different altogether. In a, in, some, in, a in a few sentences later, correct? Right? So the point is, so the point is, you're really a scientific point, but language is fluid, right? So from the coming then, and it could be more over, just a few sentences right. later. Right. Do you agree? Yes, I agree. So, so I think... But you are, um, so the, the same conjunction is used each time, and you're cherry picking which way you're interpreting the words, depending on what, how, what you want it to mean. Here's my problem. Quran is well detailed, well explained, yet you are playing with a certain words to put in a uh, put in a way that you I want it. Quran, does, it. Quran doesn't give you that one. Let's look at the we Islamic context, tradition. We did read it in context. Thank Let's you. look at the Islamic tradition and then see actually what does Islam say how the baby develops and what what about the baby? Can you look at the hadith, sir? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. So um, this uh, this one. Yeah, if you read um, the hadith. So. Um, so from Surah 86, sorry, this is, uh, this, uh, sorry, this is a quote from the Hadith, this is from Sahih Bukhari. It says, when the news of the arrival of the Prophet of Medina reached uh, Abdullah bin Salim, he went to him to ask him about certain things. He said, I'm going to ask you about three things which only a prophet can answer. One of the things he asks him is, why does a child attract the similarity to his father or to his mother? The Prophet replied, Gabriel has just now informed me of that. Now, this is the same source that Muhammad is getting the Quran from. Then it says, uh, as for the child, if the man's discharge precedes the woman's discharge, the child attracts a similarity to the man. And if the woman's discharge precedes the man's, then the child attracts a similarity to the woman. On this, Abdullah bin Salam said, I testify that none has the right to be worshipped except Allah, and that you are the messenger of Allah. Hey, 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 so, let me ask my questions. So you heard the hadith, you heard the hadith. So, man and woman is having sex, okay? If man discharge first, then it's going to be boy, uh, sorry, that child is going to look, look, uh, look like father. If woman discharge first, that child is going to look, look like mother. Can you give me any someone God say can support that? First of all, right? I'm Shia, right? Yeah. Sai Bukhari is not a proof from me, alright? Okay. But, okay, let's second, second, yeah. second point. Second point. Second point. Second point, right? Um, maybe, even though there's no evidence for it at maybe scientists later could say it, uh, could come up with it. So just because there's no evidence for it doesn't mean it's right. Just absence of evidence doesn't mean, doesn't mean evidence left. Okay. Third point, third point, third point. You see, Prophet Muhammad says, right? What's your name? Khan. Khan. Prophet Muhammad said, we talk in the, land, in the language of, our, of the people of our times. We're not going to say things in a scientific developed way. We're just going to say things how it's going to appear in uh, 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 the language of the people. So even though it might sound scientific, right? The, the, the point is, if, if the meaning is correct, then it can be accepted. Yeah. Correct. Here's the thing. I can see you are dying to justify Surah 20, let me finish, let me finish. Surah 23 verse 12 to 14, and now you are denying the hadith because you are Shia Muslim. No, 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 just, just hold. I'm not denying, I'm saying it's not a proof on me. Okay. It's not a proof on me. It's not a proof on me. I am amazed in 2017, still Muslim groups, Shiites and Sunnis are disagreeing regarding the sayings of Muhammad. Did Muhammad say it or not? So let me, let me come to the point. So, Surah 23 verse 12 to 14 stands by 
by itself and then it says first bones takes place then the flesh takes, takes place quran is well detailed well explained that's what it says yet it is the same allah fail to know the um, science it is the prophet of islam who's supposed to be perfect fail to understand how the baby happens because we read Thuma is at the star and then it's the word Fa that's used Thuma only occurs once in our text and that's at the very start so when we look at the surah 85 verse 5 to 7 okay it tells us something very disturbing about where the um where the first process of baby takes place sir do you want to read this for me yeah 80, um, 86 verse 5 to 7. It says, So let man consider of which stuff he is created. He is created of spouting water that comes out from between the loins and the chest bones. So, am I right to interpret that? Semen comes from. Sorry? What is that water? Sorry? What is that water? I, I'm not in I don't know. So you don't know that water? Okay. Okay. Because I don't know, one traditions. One of the words, I don't know, if it's chest bones or loins, one of the Arabic words, right, is ambiguous, right? Now you're going to say, well, the point is clear. But well, the point is, right, God is just saying to us, you are so dependent but you are nothing then. So how, why do you think there's something now? So that's why you should depend on that part of God. So the. So so, your Islamic tradition interpreted that verse as Siemens. This book. About again, again, again. This book. Yes. And this book, which is made by Muslims for the Dava purpose, interprets that as the semen. So, according to them, okay, and according to Islamic tradition, according to Islamic tradition, well explained and well detailed Quran tells us semen comes from the you're back. Missing the you're missing the point. The point is, not to tell you whether it was a chest, whether it was the chest bones or the uh, loin, the point is to tell you. That's not you the point. So that, what do you want it to be point? Quran clearly speaks. That's not the point. Quran tells us the direction and yeah, location the message, where the that get, water comes the from, what you, sir. What you get from it, what the, the lesson, the, the message that, you no, get No, 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 that, that's, that's very, very look, look, different look, interpretation look, look, you are choosing. Look, 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 the Quran speaks for itself. It doesn't look, say look, that. Look, so, look, look, according to Quran, semen comes from the lions and the chest bones, which is scientifically wrong. But then, again, again, so, again, again, I said to you, well, first of all, one of the, one of the Arabic words can have, doesn't have to meet just with the words, I'm not sure what it's wrong, but again, it doesn't have to refer to that. Second thing, which Arabic word is that? Sorry? Which I, Arabic? I don't know, but it's Okay, so, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know but you know, there is one, one. that doesn't help me, that doesn't help me, so that doesn't help me. So, we just looked at the arguments which made by Muslims and even by Muslim missionaries, tells us Quran is the word of Allah because it contains scientific miracles which Muhammad in 7th century were not able to know. One of them was the embryology. You looked at the Surah 23, 12 to 14, and then you saw actually Quran destroys the history and scientific of embryology. Yep. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. So, other thing I hear from my dear Muslim friends is, Quran is the word of Allah because, again, it gives us the information which Muhammad was not able to know in the 7th century and informations are about the mountains. So, let me read the verse for you. Yep. Surah 78 verse 6 to 7 tells us, Have we not made the earth as bed and the mountains as pegs? And then it tells us, mountains have deep roots and, uh, under the surface. That's Surah 16 verse 15. And then other one, so other one tells us, mountains are the stabilizer. Is the, so that's what Islam teaches. Can you just... I love Muslims, that's why I challenge the Quranic teaching. So, let's let's explain it to me. What does um, summary of all these things all about? So, here is um, a diagram showing the mountains which have uh, deep roots running under the surface. And you took this diagram from the Muslim yeah, sources? Yeah, I this from a Muslim book. Okay. And um, uh, <clears throat> the... Um, we, and this was, uh, these were actually known in ancient times. Like if you look at the, even the Bible, biblical text, look at Job, for example, chapter 28, verse 9. 
It says, man puts uh, put his hand to the flinty rock and overturns mountains by the roots. Or Psalm 18 verse 7 also speaks about roots and Jonah too as well. So, Quran confirms some of the information which already God of Bible revealed to the prophets. Can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Uh, are you Muslim, sir? Just quickly. Are you Muslim, sir? I'm a human being speaking as well. Can I ask a I'm glad you are a human being that speaks as yeah. you can identify. But we are talking about the Quran and scientific miracles in the Quran. If that's linked with the topic, you are very welcome to ask your question. Try and work out where when I ask the question if it's that important. Try and work out where I'm coming from when I ask the question if it's that important. By the way, can I ask a question? Yes or no? Just question, ask question. the question. Okay, right. So if all that, if it could be confirmed that all that scientific um, material in the Quran would be true, if it could be confirmed, let's assume that it could be confirmed that it's all scientifically correct, would that make it the word of God? So, it won't, but Muslims are going out and saying those are the scientific information and scientists already confirmed no they are not. That's the point. So I'm well, just telling Muslims. I'm, just to I'm telling Muslims it could be scientifically proven. That's of course not. Huh? Of course not. I didn't hear the note. Of it course couldn't. not. Okay, of right. course not. Of course not. Quran is sadly man-made book and sadly it has 1.8 billion followers. That's why I'm here to help those followers to give up on the Quran. Yeah. So we've got the certain informations in the Quran which they stole it from the Bible or they borrowed it. Let's say they borrowed it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay? Um, and what else do we have? But what happens when you read all of the relevant ayat in the Quran? So, Surah 16, verse 15. Oops. Sorry, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Um, there you go. Um, so, <clears throat> so, if we read Surah 16, verse 15, and he has cast into the earth firmly set mountains, lest it shift with you, and made rivers and roads that you may be guided. So Allah cast something to the earth, okay? What image does that conjure up in your mind if you cast something? You cast? Yeah. You throw it down. It was up somewhere. Yeah, and then it came down. And then it came down, yeah. Right, is that how mountains are formed, Tatoon? No, no. how are mountains formed? They're formed by plate tectonic activity. I'll They're pushed Quran. up from below. I'll take the Quran. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Okay, what else have you got regarding the uh, mountains verses in the Quran? Um, so we also have Surah 2131 and we placed within the earth firmly set mountains. Now if you place something again you're coming from above. Okay. Um, Surah 31 verse 10, he created the heavens without pillars that you see and has cast into the earth firmly set mountains. Again they're thrown. Um, Surah 78, have we not made the earth a, um, a resting place and the mountains as stakes? So the, the mountains are like tent pegs that are placed into the earth like stakes. So when you put all those verses together, you come to the conclusion that mountains were came down from somewhere above. And mountains are here to stake that stop earth from the shaking. Because when we look at the Tabari, we see Allah puts the mountains because fish is moving, earth is moving. That's not very uh, uh, yeah. scientific, isn't it? And that's... Sorry? What a great scholar of the Quran you are. Thank you. Okay, yes, would you like to respond to us? Explain it to us. Explain it to us. Explain it to us. You don't want to explain? Let's say a great scholar of the Quran you are then. Yeah, so someone can take all these verses, analyze the Arabic, and can you? make a conclusion. Where did the Quran say mountains came from above? We just showed we you. We just read it. There they no were cast here. down. There, there is not a single verse in the Quran which says. Okay, okay, there is no single verse. I'll give you four verses. What part of being cast onto the earth is consistent okay. with them being formed by plate tectonic activity? Okay. What do you say? What do you say it came down? Mountains can have come from. Let me just read the verse for you. Okay? Yeah. Where is it? Sorry, Surah 16, 15. Surah 16, verse 15. What Surah 21, verse 31. Surah 3, verse 10. Surah 78, say? verse 6 and 7. I already gave you four verses. Why, why Let me read them down? for you. Let me read them for you. Give me one example. Um, Surah, Surah uh, 16, 16, verse 15. 15. says, And he has cast into the earth firmly set mountains. So what does that mean? So what do you say is, is I just showed you. 
So they are cast into the earth. What does that mean? Sorry? The mountains are a solid structure on the earth. Oh, you are watching too much Coronation Street. <laughs> It cast into earth. So when you watch the Coronation Street, that's the image you want to have. But Quran disagree with you. So we looked at the Quran. Um, what does Quran teach us about the mountains? And then we saw Quran destroys the science when it comes to the mountains. And it suggests that the earth is flat, and to keep the earth from blowing away, there are ten plagues placed onto it, which are mountains. <laughs> I don't think I've got any scientific scientist who can support that. Right. Surah 50 verse 7 says, And the earth we spread it out and cast therein firmly set mountains. So earth is spread it out. Okay, what else you've got? Um, we also have um, Surah 20 53. It is he who has made for you the earth as a bed. So again, earth is as a bed. So it is spread out, it is bad. So it's talking about there is a flat earth. That's why Allah cast into earth the mountains so it stops shaking. Right. It makes sense. It makes amazing sense. When it comes to the Islam, it makes amazing sense. So we should move on to the next one. You know what doesn't make sense? What? Is the predator prior that there is a God. That's the bit that doesn't make sense. created you. That is the same God who gave you brain and that is the same God who enabled you to speak. I am amazed with that. Um, again, you are watching too much Coronation Street, but we will come to that. We will come to that. Right now we are talking about the Quran and science. So if you wait a little bit, we will come to that as well. Sir, I, sir after this I'll happily talk to you. I'm an evolutionary biologist, so we can have a discussion on that. Okay. okay. Right. You believe in the watchmaker argument? Yeah. Okay. So let's look at what does Quran teach us about the uh, brain, about the mind. So we come across from these Muslim Dawa books. They are telling us in front of the head is responsible for lying. So I've got the sh uh, shape of design of brain, and according to Muslims, in front of it is the responsible for lying. And they've got the verses from the Quran. Muslims can support that. What do you say to that? Well, the verse that they use is, let me bring it up here. Um, here we are. Um, if you look at Surah 96, verses 15 and 16, it says, No, if he does not stop, we will take him by the Nasiya, which uh, uh, is translated as front of the head, a lying, sinful Nasiya. Um, now, <clears throat> If you look at the Yusuf Ali translation, yeah. we look at the Sar Sarwar or Khalifa or Al Hilal. Other translations, yeah. And, and or and Pital, uh, they use the term forelock or the hair on the forehead. It's only the it's only Shakir who uses the word forehead. But even Shakir um, translates the Sia as forelock in Surah 1156. So, um, is it is it correct that in front of your brain is the responsible for lying. Well, that's where we have the prefrontal cortex, which is involved in executive function. But um, what, according to the Quran, they're talking about in front of your yeah. head. Yeah. yeah. According to the Quran, where is it that um, we we form sinful thoughts? Well, according to Surah 11, verse 15, it says, "Lo, now they fold up their breasts that they may hide their thoughts from him." At the very moment when they cover themselves with their clothing, Allah knoweth that which they keep hidden and that which they proclaim. Lo, he is aware of what is in the breasts of men. So, even though certain verses makes a claim that front of your head is responsible for you to lie, also there are certain verses tells us um, your chest uh, behind the things in your chest are helping you to lie. Yeah. So there is contradiction in that. So what we've done is we looked at the couple of verses from the Quran because 
we saw those books which are given out by Muslims and telling lots of lies about Quran to the Muslims. We try to examine some of those verses which Muslims claim to be the scientific miracles. We saw actually it does destroy the science. We looked at the embryology and then we saw actually that claim is false claim. What else we did look at? We looked at the mountains and then what did the science say regarding the mountains? They're pushed up by, plate, by uh, colliding continents and plate tectonic activity below the surface are pushed up. So again, Quran destroys the science. And then we looked at the, the uh, how do you lie in front of with you lie in front of your head, and then that again against science. So which line you pick? You can pick one verse. You can look at in the whole context, but you have to make a choice between science or the Quran because they can, they are not complementary to one another. They are not. Um, one of them cannot confirm the other one. They are all discrediting one and other. And it tells us, actually, informations in the Quran regarding the science are very, very disturbing. It is very disturbing. And in one sense, it is disgraceful that Muslims spend lots of time to write a dawa books. So when you look at the Quran, when you read the Quran, do you have any verses you can say, because of this verse, because of this verse, when I look at from the science background, helps me to believe in, Mo believe in Muhammad as a prophet? Absolutely not. In fact, it's quite the opposite. So, there are 6,236 verses in the Quran, yet there is not one verse confirms the science. Is that correct? And, um, and there are many which disconfirm the science. And there are lots of verses discredit the science. Welcome to the world of, world of Islam. One thing, one thing you want to talk about Islam is that Islam allows them to marry their cousin and shut their cousin every single night. Whereas Christianity doesn't allow you to do such thing. But Islam, according to their religion, says it's okay for you to marry your cousin and shut her every single night. Thank you for that comment. I am sure. Islam says you get to marry your cousin and shut them every night, but Christianity says no. Don't marry your cousin. As Islam. That's why okay. they marry your cousin. As country. Islam. Their children, some of them are both disabled. Their children, some of them have two fingers. As Islam teaches lots of things about way of life. And we just had a gentleman who gave us a couple of tips. But today, we wanted to see what does Islam and Quran teach us about science. And very clearly we saw it discredits the science. Or science discredits the Quran. What a shame thing, actually. Can you, can you make a claim, such a claim that Bible is the word of God because of the scientific miracles? No. No. As a Christian, we never go out and make that claim. And we don't publish such a box because Bible is word of God because of the informations in the Bible, not because of the scientific information. Bible never claims to be the scientific books. Bible tells us the revelation God reveals to himself, mankind. Can you just tell us what is the basic teachings of the Bible? Jonathan? The basic teachings of the Bible is that we're all sinners. We've all fallen short of God's glory. We've broken his law. God, on the other hand, is holy. He's perfectly just and perfectly righteous. And as such, he must come against sin with perfect justice and perfect righteousness. And that places us in a terrible situation because we are, because of our sin, cut off from God. And um, we are on our way to a lost eternity, separated from the favorable presence of God. But Christ, because Christ, how do they react to and, people when the they find this theory? Christ, they God, God himself broke into human history and the person of Christ on the cross of Calvary absorbed upon himself the justice and the penalty destined for us so that we can be legally acquitted for a just and holy God. So that is the another reason you need to give up on the Quran and come back to the Lord Jesus. Come back to the God of Bible because it is only God of Bible who helps you to and who gives you the way how you can spend your eternity with him.